G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today we're covering how to review model changes between model versions in Dynamo uh, using scripting. So we're going to link an old version of a file into a current version and compare it with Dynamo and then highlight the differences uh, graphically. So there's some alternatives of how to do this. Uh, one of them is to use BIM 360's uh, design tools. So one of them is called, the, I think it's the change manager or the model change manager. Um, and it enables you to see what's happened between model issues. Uh, essentially, we're replicating this behavior in Revit because uh, not everyone has access to these tools. Uh, likewise, Navisworks has a model comparison tool which you can use to compare different uh, Navisworks files. But again, not everyone has access to this or doesn't know how to use it. So we're going to look at Revit and Dynamo only. We're using 2.0.3 at the moment, but 2.0.2 .2, uh, should also suffice. Uh, we're using a couple of custom nodes today, so the obvious ones will be from data shapes because uh, we're utilizing their modification tracker nodes in order to find the elements that have changed so we know what to override and how to override it. Uh, we're also look using clockwork in order to override the transparency of elements that haven't changed uh, to make them very transparent so we can really see what has changed in solid color. Uh, we're also sourcing the active view uh, using Quasar. Uh, I found there's, there's a lot of versions of active view nodes in most packages, but this one seems to be quite uh, quite solid for me. Other ones can be quite temperamental or don't seem to work in particular builds of Dynamo. And likewise, we're also going to be gathering all the linked documents. Uh, we could use Archilab or Quasar. Both methods work. Um, I may actually use Quasar in this case. Uh, we'll, we'll see how we go as we go along in the script. Um, so without further ado, let's go to making the script itself. Uh, so we're, we're in a Revit model at the moment, and we've made a few changes to our basic sample model. So we have a tree here that we've added, so that's entirely new. We have a wall that we've raised, which has technically changed the data of the wall, um, but also the geometry. Uh, we've added a comment to the roof, which has changed the, the data, but not the geometry. And we'll just take a family and modify its geometry without modifying it, finding its data. So let's just take the tabletop here and make it a little bit deeper. Because this won't register as a change in data, uh, I don't think. So we've really got all the categories of possible change that you'd want to detect in Revit between versions of models. And what we'll do there is we're also going to link the unchanged model in. So I'll just do it again just so you know how. Um, so essentially you'd have a copy of the model, ideally with a different name. In this case, I'm just going to navigate to my folder and we'll just link it in origin to origin because uh, it essentially should be in the same position as its current version. Let's see, it's just come in there and we'll just turn it off for um, ease of review. Okay, so we're just going to go into Dynamo now. So we're going to basically be utilizing these two nodes here. Uh, the first one gathers and compares the current document open and a previous version which is linked and it, it says which categories do you want to compare. So you could just compare walls or doors um, or you could you could compare all categories. In this case we're just going to limit to the categories that we can see in the current view. You can also build a report out of these as well um, and then it gathers the existing element data and any new or deleted elements. So if we're working the other way around with an older version of the script um, you could also tell which elements were removed in a new version of the script. Um, likewise, you can also uh, put in the previous version document as current and vice versa to make the script work the other way around. But in this case, we're just going to be looking at new things that have happened. Um, so you obviously can't see if something's been deleted because it's gone. Uh, but you can see what's new and we can also see what existing elements have changed in geometry or parameter in various combinations. So we'll use some graphical overrides to represent that. For now, I'm just going to freeze these nodes because they will try to typically run um, while I run the script. Notice we're in manual mode currently. So the first thing we're going to do is take all elements in active view and we're going to get their category. So we should use the get element category node. And then we're going to get a unique list of items from there because we're going to get about 500 items and 500 categories. But obviously there's going to be a lot of duplication of that data as things are going to be of the same category multiple times. So we're just going to take those nodes and feed that into our categories node. And we should expect uh, to get a list of categories. And there we go. But you can see obviously we have model pools. So we're trying to manage those model pool occurrences out using a unique items list. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to get all link documents and we'll just use the Quasar link collector in this case 
just so we minimize the number of custom packages that you need. Um, and essentially how this package works is it builds a sub list for each uh, respective link in your model. So we're just gonna get uh, the item at index one uh, in sub list at index zero. So a basic code block syntax we could use to do this is uh, a variable and then the first item we're searching for we'll put in square brackets so we want sub list zero and we want index one and there you go you can see we've got that our link there um, from that index out of that sub list and this is a way you could also manage to get your link if you had more than one link in your file um, there's smarter ways to obtain the link um, that involve more complex list management and probably the use of the data shapes user interface package but for this one we're just going to keep it simple we're just going to do a one-off uh, script that we can run. Obviously, you could change this if you had another instance. So we're going to feed that into our previous version node. Um, at that point, we could run a model comparison. But what we want to do now is override the color of elements. So we're going to take these color by a, uh, ARGB, so alpha, red, green, blue. And we're going to override particular sets of elements. So the first thing we want to override is all our new elements. And we want to override these to be... Let's say uh, blue. So we want the alpha to be 255, and we want the red to be zero, the green to be zero, and the blue to be 255. And that would override these elements to blue. Um, I'll save the, the final run in this case, uh, just to save some time, because it does take a little while to run the script. Okay, so the first thing that we do want to override is the same geometry and same parameter values. So we're essentially going to override these elements to be transparent. So again, we're going to take our active view. I believe this may default to active. If not, I may just source the active view instead. There's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, nodes that can do this. So I'm just going to search through my node library, and let's pick one. Uh, we'll just take uh, let's just take springs. So you may need the springs package as well, or a package that has the active view node available. And I think this one needs a Boolean connected to it as well to enable it to be refreshed if you rerun the script set to true by default. Okay, so our transparency, uh, let's say that we want that to be 50% transparent. And that should make anything that hasn't changed in geometry or parameters 50% uh, transparent. From there, we're going to take the same geometry. Actually, let's do let's just do 100% transparent. Easier to see. And the last three we're going to do are going to override these elements. And we're just going to take this particular node here, and we're going to essentially set up three colors. So we'll take those two values, and let's just say that we want to do red, orange, and uh, red, orange, and green. So same geometry. But different parameter values. We will do uh, we'll do red. So in this case, uh, alpha and red will be 255, and zero for green and blue. Uh, we'll take the next color and we'll feed that into different geometry, but same parameter values. In this case, we'll need to introduce a 125 to do orange. Okay, so our red will be 255. Our green will be 125 and our blue will be zero. And then our final color, which is green, is a little bit easier. And green is for different geometry and parameter values. Um, you could obviously pick different colors. I'm just picking some samples here. So alpha and red will be 250, uh, sorry, alpha and green will be 255. Everything else will be zero. So essentially at this point, we should be able to unfreeze our script and run our comparison. So if I just minimize this window so that we can watch the model at the same time. And this, this may take a little while, so I might put on a little little musical number to accompany the process, just for a laugh. Um, but we'll just run the script. And essentially what it's doing is gathering all elements and all data of the categories that we provided and running a full comparison of checking whether it's new so if it doesn't exist in the previous link and also checking if its parameters have changed, uh, which is a lot of parameters to compare. So you can expect this script to take a while for larger files, 
Um, in this case, I don't expect it should take too long because it's quite a small model, um, but you could expect it to take quite a while. But uh, make sure you have some patience and save before you run the script. Uh, should, should almost go without saying, uh, but you'd be surprised how often I have to teach people who save before they do big things. These crashes can occur. Should almost be done. Not like the others, one of these really things hope it works after all doesn't time. belong. Can you tell which thing is not like the other by the time I finish this song? And there we go. Uh, brilliant. So it looks like the script has worked perfectly. So uh, we can see that we have a new tree which is blue. So that is great. Just got a hidden line. So you can see that that's been overridden. Uh, you'll see that the wall, which has changed in geometry and in data, uh, has become green. Our roof, that was red, uh, because it has changed in data, but not in geometry. Uh, it's interesting that our countertop is, I believe it's green by the looks of it. Yes, so it must have found some piece of data that changed in that process. Um, I think it's quite hard to have an element that changes in geometry, but doesn't change in data. So if anything, really, the, the color coding in this case maybe won't be that useful. It's more to highlight what has changed um, in general. Uh, but to find something that changed in geometry and not in data is probably quite difficult in a BIM model where most things have data related to them. Uh, one shortcoming to be aware of is I don't believe this script will detect changes in type data. Um, I have tried changing type data in a few elements before and it doesn't always seem to detect the change uh, in the results of the script. Um, but there we go, so that seems to have worked. So there you go, you can do model comparison in Dynamo in Revit. Um, but keep in mind there's other programs that are faster at doing this, but obviously more expensive and sometimes less available. Uh, so hopefully that gives you another idea for how you can use Dynamo in Revit. Uh, there might be other applications for this tool that I'm not aware of yet or I haven't thought of. Um, if you can think of any, feel free to leave them down below in comments. And if you have any queries, let me know as well. Uh, thanks for watching today. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks. Take care. Bye.